Hi, friends. GM. Um, hope everyone's having a great day. Was anybody at the Goblins last night? Because I was not. But here we go. So today, I want to speak to you about handcrafted, non-generated collectibles. And what I mean by that is basically art. I'm an artist. When I discovered NFTs back in March, I really wanted to get deep into it. But I didn't know anything about code or contracts or any of the stuff that um, is very you know, needed in order to make a collection. But regardless, I decided to go for it. So when I first started, one of the things I did was I did a bit of a market study on foundation because as an artist, I wanted to be able to sell my art. I discovered in foundation that at the time, what was kind of popular were colorful animated GIFs. So I decided to create a collection called the Crypto Llamas. I'm Peruvian, so I thought it'd be appropriate to make something along those lines. I made my very first Crypto Llama, and I was fortunate enough to sell it on foundation to BitBuzz, who's a very awesome collector, for around half an ETH. And that, to me, was the beginning of what is now my full-time career as an NFT artist. With that sale, I then be, I continued on. I continued creating different crypto llamas, and what I did was, after I sold my first couple of llamas, I was able to gather enough ETH to buy land in the metaverse. I bought a gallery. I pretty much worked it in one day. I didn't sleep. I threw a party in the metaverse over simultaneously at the metaverse land and at Clubhouse. And I launched a second collection called the Baby Crypto Llamas, which are equally as cute. And I sold a bunch of them. People were very excited and hadn't really seen an artist kind of go hard in one day as I had. It, it was very fun. I continued building, and later on, I dropped another collection called the 3D Chrome Punks. Soon I found myself creating a bit of an ecosystem where as an artist, I was able to create a bunch of art none of it generated, yet still be able to find fans and people who really enjoyed what I was doing. With the profits from that collection, I bought a second gallery in the metaverse, a seven-story uh, piece of land, which I also constructed. As a 3D artist, I was able to make voxels and things like that to make my gallery better. And I find myself constantly having parties as well as letting other artists join my gallery if they so wish, so they can display their art. So all of this is to really speak to the artists out there that don't know code or don't know anything about contracts to let you know that it can be done. It is possible to be in this space and not generate your art. I've done it. I feel very fortunate that I was able to do it. I feel also fortunate that I was able to find fans and people who really like art. I feel like at the end of the day, the silent minority is becoming artists that aren't generating their art. So to me, it, it's very awesome that I'm able to be in the space. Um, there are new tools nowadays that are helping artists create their own smart contracts, which is something that is suggested. Uh, some of the stuff, I, some of you may know the OpenSea share storefront. A lot of stuff I do is on there because I feel like I haven't reached that threshold where I have to have my own contract just yet. But one day I will, and if other artists out there OpenSea is a great resource so that you can have your art and start minting and start selling. Uh, I feel also that it's very important to sell yourself as an artist. To me, NFT culture is one of the most important things that we can do in the space. And what I mean by that is that I'm constantly looking at what is coming up next and what is, let's say, hot in the market. So as a 3D artist, for example, I just made a goblin when the goblins came out and I did a 3D version of my We're All Gonna Die. To me, the culture is very, very important in the NFT space. I feel like I wanna ride the wave and I wanna be on top of everything that's happening. If you as an artist decide to do uh, your own version of a Moonbird or a Board Ape Yacht Club, I feel like that's something that's gonna help you. It's a large ocean and I feel like if you ride the wave together, it's gonna be a great, great help. Um, besides all that, I just I really want to thank everybody who supported me, everybody in Twitter and Instagram and Discord who has helped me. Like I said, this journey isn't easy. As an artist in this space, with constant generative projects of profile pictures every single day, it can be hard to find your own voice. It can be hard to even survive the space. But it can be done with hard work, with determination, and with a little bit of support from people who enjoy your art. 
as an artist, you have to find a way to find your own voice, whether that's Twitter Spaces, whether that's Clubhouse, any way you can find a way to tell your story, it's going to benefit you. I feel like people buy my art not because of the art itself, but because it's me, and I'm the one who's making it. I feel like people will recognize and enjoy seeing artists flourish in this space. Let's not forget, before Bored Apes came out, the space was dominated by artists. From Maker's Place to Super Rare, art was the main thing selling. After the Bored Apes, it all became about profile picture projects. And there's nothing wrong with that. I made a good amount of money flipping those projects. At the end of the day, trading is very important. But let's not forget the artists and how much we have to struggle to survive in this space. Let's not forget that art is a main, main part of this. And I hope to see it grow. I feel, like I said, very fortunate to all the people who have supported me. For, thank you to everybody who's here listening to me. A big thank you to my wife, who's been so supportive of me and my art and all of this. So again, I just uh, wanted to take this opportunity to talk about non-generative art. I feel like it's very important, and I encourage all of you to maybe pick up some one-on-one -on -one pieces to find some art that you really like, some artists, support them, give them some follows. And I would encourage artists, like I mentioned, to really, really find a way to make your voice be heard, to really find a way to get deep within the NFT culture. Stuff in the metaverse, it really helps out. When I purchased my lands, I was able to create wearables, which I then airdropped to my holders. It's my version of utility, and it's a way for me to keep going daily. It's an entire ecosystem. And while it may, it may not be very easy, I find that it's very rewarding. I've been doing this for a little bit. It's going to be about two years now. I've been doing NFTs full time as a creator, and I really wouldn't want to go anywhere else. I left client work, I left freelance to be in this space 100%, to give it all. And I'm very proud of what I've achieved, and I'm very, look, I'm very much looking forward to achieving even more. To me, my goal is going to be to be one of the best artists out there. I enjoy X Copy and Beeple, and I really want my name to be out there, to be one of them. Uh, my name is Psych Dre. Thank you all of you. Thank all of you for listening to me. It's been really awesome. If you see me and you have any questions, whether it's about R or contracts or anything at all, any 3D stuff, I'm your guy. So thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you to NFT NYC for letting me speak. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you.